From Cali to Tally, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source, and this is Wake Up Warchant. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. And I hate everything about you. Wake up! What up, everybody? Let's do it. Showtime. We're both here at the Midtown offices, Corey Clark and myself. It's Florida week. By the way. Florida hate week. Hate them. Um, I hate them, Corey. I know you do. Hate I know them. More than the Canes. Uh, oh, yeah. By and large. I mean, we can't. Tomorrow's got to be our last show, right? Like, we can't. I'm not no. doing a Thanksgiving no. show. Come on. No. Nope. Come on, man. Not doing a Thanksgiving show. Not doing a day after Thanksgiving show. After what they just did. On Saturday night for you. No, the, no I'm not doing it. The absolute I don't think anybody should expect win. us to do it, um, and I don't think we should do it. Well, I'm going to do a solo show. Then. All right. Well, let hey, people want. let people know right away that it's a solo show <laughs> as soon as it starts so <laughs> they don't listen. For like, Where's, what's Corey going to talk? <laughs> Although that would be funny. Like, I'm here with Corey Clark, and then I just never <laughs> speak. He's locked in the trunk. Yeah. Well, I'll do one tomorrow. Yeah, all right. And then maybe – uh, yeah, nobody's going to be listening to us on Thanksgiving. Uh, we can't do a Thanksgiving show. I, I, I forbid it. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. And I'll, then even I'll the Friday heathen. after Thanksgiving, I, that's a holiday. Well, you know, we don't we, we don't need to be we, maybe we can, be doing that. Maybe we can record something. We can do two shows tomorrow. We can just run one for, you know, Wednesday and then one run for Friday. I mean, I feel like we... If you guys want to give us a call, 850-792-5730, if they're compelling enough, 850-792-5730. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and do something. Or maybe we'll, maybe we'll, we'll bundle it with uh, Renegade Express. Also, leave your questions over on Warchant.com. If you're not a member, use the promo code Warchant30 for 30 free days, risk-free trial. Post your question on the Tribal Council. Obviously, not obviously, but um, also... It's been a while since we've uh, sat here and, and asked to uh, for a favor. Go ahead, if you could, leave us a five-star review. I haven't looked at our reviews on iTunes in God knows how long. But you need to rate us. Um, five stars. Obviously, five stars. If it's a, Four stars, maybe, but I can't quite see what you're looking for then if we're only a four-star show. Anything less than that, you know, d- don't bother. Don't yeah. do it. Don't do it for us. D- don't do it for us. Just be nice. Be complimentary. We're good to you. This is free. Free. You haven't paid a dime for this. Not one. You don't even have to be a War Chant subscriber to listen to Wake Up War Chant. You should be a War Chant subscriber. It makes zero sense that you're not. Uh, it's for the, what is it, a cup of coffee a day? Less than that. So less than a cup of coffee a day, you can get the witticisms of Aslan and Corey and Ira, Gene, Michael Langson on the recruiting trail. It's all in all the wonderful people of the Tribal Council. You know what I mean? Pretty rational group of folks for the most part. Yeah. I kind of like that we don't have a sponsor because I feel I, I disagree. But go I'd ahead. like more money, but I, right. But then I would be more beholden to another interest, corporate interest. Right. We don't I want the man telling myself. us. We don't want the man yeah. telling us what to do. You or know, say. hey, Aslan, you're being a little too negative. Can you can you perk it up a little bit? No, absolutely. That's not. not what I do. Yeah, sure. I don't do that with the five and six football program. Right. And I don't know what in the last ten months thought people thought that I I was going to come out here Monday and just guns a blazing. Wow, we're back. Florida State is back. Right. Like with Joe Tess. No. Like, where do people get these things? I'm just going to flip a switch. That's who I am. I feel people. like. I feel like. That's what you signed up for. You could be a little uh, happier in the moment that well, they did win a game. And it's still not. It, it's still at large. It's still the same program. Whether they win Saturday or don't win Saturday, it's still the same program. It's a middling average program that needs, you know, an injection of a lot of different things. But you can still, in the moment, be excited about my man streaking down the field, breaking those Boston College hearts. Who's, hearts were broken. Who's going to drive seven hours of the trip up to Canton, brother? Come on. I'm well, excited we'll be for there. Him. Well, we'll do, we really will. I will be there. I promise you. I, I don't know if well. I've said this before, but it's like I don't know where we're going to be in 20 years, you and I. We might not be in contact anymore. Florida might not even be a state. It might be underwater. You're right. We we might not be a republic. There's a lot of things at play in the next 20 years. But um, I think no matter where we are in our lives, it's like, you know, the old, the 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 male and female, like, longtime friends. Are like, hey, if we're not married at 40, yeah, yeah. let's we'll, get together. We'll make it happen. 
or I'll meet you at the top of the Empire State Building, like in uh, you've got not you've got mail. Sleepless in Seattle. We're gonna meet at the Empire State Building. Or maybe the, is it the Space Needle? So no matter what was it the Empire State Building? Wasn't it? It was, it was, it was in, in Seattle. New York. Oh, well, I know, but it was she went to New York. Did to she? Find okay. Come on, man. Let's I don't go. remember the whole entire. Place. Well, I worked at a movie such theater. You're a huge Meg Ryan but, fan. I, I forgot. Well, but I worked at a huge Meg Ryan fan. I worked She's so gorgeous. Well, she was really pretty. Gosh, she was so pretty. But um. I worked at the movie theater the that summer that it came out. It was the same oh, summer. Really? The movie theater I worked at had Forrest Gump, had In the Line of Fire with Clint Eastwood, big movie. Right. Um, God, there was one more. The Fugitive was enormous. Oh, yeah. And Fugitive I had to do crowd good. control. Really? So I was like this, I don't know, 17, wearing this stupid bow tie and red vest. <laughs> can they, can y'all get off the sidewalk? Can y'all get on the sidewalk, please? People, I couldn't believe that man, my manager told me, Corey, you've got to do crowd control. Because it would wrap around the building for like when – um, what was the oh Jurassic Park for Jurassic oh, Park it would wow, wrap yeah. around the building. I, my first night was opening night oh, geez. for Jurassic Park. And little little trivia for you if you've never worked at a movie theater, do you know how we cleaned up the movie theater at the end of a huge show like that? That little rolling vacuum thing that's not a vacuum because people are just dis- people are just disgusting. Slops. Apparently they'll just drop their drink and the, they're <laughs> done with the they're done with the movie. They just slam their cup <laughs> on the ground like they're dropping a mic. Um, we get a leaf blower. And oh. start at the top and blow it all the way down to the bottom, huh. and then we sweep it up at the bottom and put it in the bags and leave. I like how you say we, as you're as, as if you're still part of the fraternity. We did. I am part of the fraternity. That's what <laughs> we did. That's what we did. But anyway, in 20 years, no matter where we are in our lives, right. we will be in Canton. I'm going to make a point to be in Canton that, is it a Sunday that they do the, I don't. I don't Usually I think so. Yeah, that, that whatever that weekend is, we're going to be there yeah. for some more. I guess it'll probably be more like 25 years, right? Because he's going to – maybe 23, something like that. Yeah, I guess. But I will be there with my grandkids. Brady will be there yeah. all wearing our 15 jerseys. Maybe Brady will be his agent. Well, he's got to hurry up because, I mean, Brady's only oh, 10. Oh, right, yeah. So, Brady, I mean, I guess this morning will almost be about retiring age by the okay. time Brady could get his uh, yeah. math, uh, a strong suit. law degree, I guess. is what. Do you even need a degree to be an agent? I don't know. I think you do. I mean, do I you think need to pass? To. You don't need to pass the bar, or do you? Do you I know you got to be an agent. You got to be a licensed agent, but I don't know if you have to pass the bar yeah, to do that. But anyway, point. so we'll be there in Canton because Demore and Terry's really good. Was he an ACC receiver of the week? I don't know. I didn't see anything. I know like Dontavious that. Jackson was linebacker of the week, and I believe Cam Akers was running back of the week. Really? Yep. Tamori might have been freshman of the week. Um, but yeah, they had five player of the week awards this week. So, you know, Florida State. The preeminent program in the Atlantic Coast Conference is starting, starts in Tallahassee. It's starting to look that way. It's starting to look that way. Come you in know, there. I was talking um, I was talking with somebody that was signing me up, actually, for a different form of insurance. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. But he, he's not really a big sports fan, but he, he knows a little bit about the program. And he was like, you know, if they'd only won that Miami game, everything would be fine right now. If they had just held on for that Miami game – the the no matter what happened this Saturday, there'd be really no pre- – I mean, other than you want to beat your rival, you're still going to a bowl. The bowl streak would have been extended. You would have beaten one of your rivals, um, and you would have been like, okay, it's not a it's not an awful season. It's not any worse than last season. But then he's like, they blew that Miami game, and then that – you know, now, now they're fighting for their lives just to get to bowl eligibility, which is the truth. But then maybe this game – you never know. Maybe they don't win this game. I don't know. Maybe they don't play as hungry against Boston College because they didn't – they wouldn't have. They knew they had only had to win one of the next two instead of two of the next two. So who knows? But that was a tough law. If you if you would if that pass had counted, like it should have. Mm-hmm. What's Aslan's viewpoint on this season? <clears throat> if they're well, they'd be six and five right six now. Six and five with a win over a rival, and two bowl teams. You know, I'm not too. I don't know if this sounds crazy. I'm not bothered by the Clemson and the Notre Dame games. Like as horrible as they looked, as, as Far removed as they look from being one of the four best teams in the nation and competing for the playoff, I wasn't too bothered by those games. Um, I don't know what has bothered me. Like the not the the Boston College game was fine. Like that Louisville game bothered me. I know they won the game, but that game bothered me. They looked horrible in the second half, despite the fact they rallied. In terms no, of the, they, they looked on horrible the in the first half. Well, the, the defense looked terrible in the back end. There was all these wide open That's passes they had going in the second half. That was the, that was the second half. But they Louisville. only scored three points in the second half. Well, because half. the guy can't throw a well, freaking right. football. Yeah, and then yeah. his coach yeah. decides to make him throw the ball on third down. He just needs to run it a few times. I mean, I almost I need to go back and look at that and see. I don't. I felt like they practically they were one play away from being able to run the clock out. Like another first down away from being able to run the clock out pretty much. Oh, Louisville. Yeah, 100%. Even if they just run the ball, 
and run the yeah. clock. Florida State's going to get the ball back with under a minute left and no timeouts. Yeah. Down probably six points. Yeah. That, the Virginia Tech game bothers me. Uh, but, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to go and audit everything. Yeah, I mean, if they're 6-5 and five right now, you, you beat Miami, you're going to the Florida game. Florida's not, obviously, they're nothing totally uh, intimidating. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, probably is a little bit of a different feel, but you, you did lose that game, and the way you lost it happened. Yeah. The NC State game was not nice. Uh, that's You shouldn't lose that bad to NC State. I'm sorry, you shouldn't lose that bad to NC State. Nobody could argue that. You shouldn't lose that bad to Clemson. Or Notre Dame. I mean, they're, all of that was embarrassing. That three-week stretch was as embarrassing a three-week stretch as Florida State football has probably ever had, even though two of them, all of them were bowl teams, all of them might be nine-win teams or better, and two of them are going to go to the playoff. You still you, you compete at least. You were completely overmatched and overwhelmed. And down in all three games, you were down at least 17 to nothing. It's embarrassing, man. It's embarrassing. It'd be embarrassing – in 1974, that would have been embarrassing. In 76, that would have been embarrassing. In 2009, that would have been embarrassing. So you can't get away from that. At the same time, um, they, you know, that again, to, to come back from that and actually, you know, I thought they played pretty well. You know, Boston College is a decent team. Yeah, that was a good win. You know, and they scored more against them than Clemson did. Yeah. Um, but Clemson's offense, I mean, Clemson had a punt return for a touchdown, but – you know, Florida State's offense was – I think Ira said that all season Boston College had given up two plays of 40 or more yards. All season. Hmm. And they gave up two against Florida State. Get no, some. they gave three. Against, they, Mo- oh, Mooney had a 40-yarder and then, and then Cam and then uh, Terry. So you're starting to see a little bit, just a little bit right. of like the Florida State, uh, you know. Well, again, it goes – Specialness out wide or the, the, the in the skill players. It's, it's to the point of how are you going to judge the season. And, and my whole thing, again, you know, I've said this many times on the show, if you're just joining us, welcome. I just want to see bits from each game that you can take away from and build off of. And I think to your point, yeah, you're seeing the way this can look if it gets rolling, right? If they have the right quarterback, if they have the right offensive line. So it, it is encouraging. This isn't a doomed endeavor – bringing in Willie Taggart to, to Tallahassee to see if he can get this thing back going. It's not a doomed endeavor at all. It's, But I don't feel overly optimistic about it most of the time either. There's moments where I, I'll watch the game on Saturday. I'll say a comment in the press box. Well, that was really nice. There's things that I like and I, I do see. But most of your comments in the press box aren't of that ilk. Well, think about the games we've been in the press box in the last few weeks. No, I know. Any of them. It doesn't matter, any of them. No. But that's your your nature. It's kind of my nature too. Yeah. I always see, like, even when Terry scores a touchdown, my first inclination is, oh, well. You left two minutes on the clock. Good job. I didn't feel that at all. I mean, you were saying, you were like, man, they're going to probably go down and, and figure out. But still, out that was to... a cool moment yeah, for them to take the lead. Fantastic. Yeah, so it, it's I'm just not that guy. I mean, listen, 2013, it took me a few weeks to come around. I, I wasn't uh, after the oh, Pittsburgh game. Oh, I thought game. they were going to lose to Clemson. Not just because I hadn't seen them beat yeah. Clemson and Clemson in forever, and that was a good team. I certainly didn't think a uh, 44-point win or 41-point yeah. win or whatever it was. I think that after that, then I could start. I could open after my heart that. Again. All of a sudden, it's like okay. And then what they did to NC State the very next week to be up thirty-five uh-huh, nothing in the first quarter. You're like, okay, this is an all-time team, and it was. I mean, they obliterated everyone. And uh, yeah, man, I think whether they, but I guess my my philosophy on it is whether they win on Saturday or not. I won't think. I really won't think more or less of this program. I will. This program is a six and six program. Last year they got a little they, – they won some games close and they played Louisiana Monroe instead of Notre Dame. This year they lost some games really badly and played Notre Dame instead of Louisiana Monroe. It's about, this, it's about where it was. The question, and it's a reason to wonder about – to be hopeful, is, it, is, it, is there an uptick coming or is this what it is? You know, again, it's, it's certainly not fair to judge him on one season. And, again, he took over a team that was 3-6 and six last year. So he took over a team that didn't do anything last year. And they still haven't really done much. It's still the same team. Well, then what is this year? This, so this well, is a total so, throwaway for you. Well, then. no. It, what, it's, been, it's been a disappointment. It, there's no way you can say it hasn't been. Because, I, you know, I thought they had a chance to win 9 or 10 games. And then you lose to Florida, and then you don't, that doesn't change your opinion on it. Well, I mean, if they, if they beat Florida 21 to 20 or they lose 20 to 16, I mean, yeah, it's a play here or there. You know what I mean? Like – that but some damn, of it could just gotta be, make plays, man. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, you want them to win, but I'm saying it wouldn't make it a it wouldn't make it a success if they beat Florida. And I think 
you know, and I and I, I made fun of them all the time, but there is a lot of truth in what those two people say all the time about results and process. And, you know, I made the mistake in 15 and 16 of, although in the middle it got ugly, at the end of the season they had 10 wins. And so you look at the results and say, you know what, it's a 10-win program. That's a New Year's 6 program. Well, I mean – they didn't deserve to. I mean, they they got into the Orange Bowl because the team did. The, they didn't want Louisville. They wanted a Florida State Michigan matchup. They were nine and three, in with with a couple bad losses. In oh, well, one I, bad loss. No bad losses in like they they looked bad doing it. Um, North Carolina, I guess. In North that. Carolina was gross. I mean, they were down twenty one nothing in that game, and then gave it up the way they gave it up um, because your man won't kick. Your your man just kept kicking field goals in the first quarter. Aguayo wide right, Aguayo wide left, Aguayo wide right. He missed three field goals in the first quarter of that North Carolina game, which has to be an NCAA record. Yeah. But so, and then all of a sudden this happens. And then, you know, the last two years happened. So it wasn't really a 10-win program. If you're, You could see it trending in the wrong direction despite 10 wins. You could see it. And then it imploded last year. And now, so this year, you know, it's just a record – whether you're six and six or seven and five or five and seven, none of it is good enough for Florida State. You'd like to keep the streaks alive, but what you're looking towards is okay. Well, next year can they win nine? And two years later, can they win eleven? That's what you're. I mean, this is a, a yeah, man. This is a way. These last two seasons have just been awful. They're six and ten in the ACC the last two seasons. People want to fire Leonard Hamilton if he goes six and ten in the ACC, and that's a real. That's the best basketball conference in the country. So you. You, I want to see the stride, and, and they haven't looked good doing it, except for this last week. Couple Wake Forest game, I thought they played well on defense. I'm not giving you any credit for Wake Forest, sorry. I mean, but it. again, with Florida State, what's sad is Florida State, the state of this program right now, you can't dismiss any wins over anyone, especially comfortable wins, because they don't get them. I'm so, not dismissing them. I'm just not going to celebrate them to a, a certain degree that people think that are – I know it's, I'm not, so, not going to uh, – Wake Forest, come on, but man, my, Wake Forest. But my point Wake is – no, no, if they beat Florida twenty-four to twenty, you're or right. Lose, no, it doesn't change you're, your. You're aspect still going to be program. like, okay, right. what's it going to be in 2019? Are we yeah. going to be scraping and clawing for another bowl bid, or is it going to be a ten-win season? It really doesn't have much impact on what this program is. This program is a 500 mediocre middling ACC program right now. It's trying to find its way. Right. Yes, yes. And it, what One happens on Saturday not gonna... will not change. It might change your viewpoint going into next season, but it won't make a hill of beans difference. Is that a saying? Because I feel like I've said it two Hill of shows Beans, in... yeah. Hill of Beans is a Hill of Beans sure. difference? Well, I think Hill of Beans is, can be used as any sort of okay. measurement right. in terms of, I mean, less, more, yeah. a lot, not a lot. Right. I don't know, but there's there's got to be a little bit of a different field. Again, I, I'm looking at pieces. I need things to feel good about. You beat Florida, no matter how you beat Florida, it's an amazing feeling. And then you cap it off with a bowl win and you end, end the season 7-5. and five. I don't know. I'm seven and six, seven but and six, also sorry. and maybe with a top ten, top five recruiting class, you 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 get the good vibes going. Right. And I no, and I do think that. Like I think, um, but I mean, how much you know? If Florida State doesn't beat South Carolina. Does that matter? I mean, would that have mattered at all, really, in the grand scheme of things? Because the next year they were two and three after five games, right. and you thought you had all this momentum. Yeah, no, but I- you could see the changes, even though they were incremental. You could see in 2010 and then late in 2011 the way that defense was playing because the offense was a disaster because of the offensive line, weirdly. But uh, you could see you could see the progress being made because of how they played defense. And so, you know, are you seeing that kind – you're not seeing that kind of progress yet. It may, but, you know, maybe I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. If they somehow hold Florida to under 20, they look good doing it, they play like they played Saturday – then okay, maybe going into the next season, you do feel a little bit better about Harlan Barnett, even if you lose seventeen to thirteen. It's hugely crucial. Willie said it on Monday that, and I don't know how much this was coach speak or just you know diplomatic speak. That it's not just the players; it's the fans are involved in this too. He needs he needs a big turnout Saturday. He needs the fans to help lift them up, help them play a good, strong game. It's going to be tough to feel good about this team again. It, uh, the program is where it's at. We assume Willie's going to make some changes on his staff, most likely. We assume there's going to be a good crop of kids coming in. I don't know how much of an instant impact a lot of those kids are going to be able to make because the positions of need, whether it's linebacker, offensive line. I mean, I guess linebacker to a certain degree, you can see true freshman. We're seeing what Jaden would be right now making an impact. I don't know how many kids from high school are going to come in day one 
despite how much maligned this offensive line is, and they're going to be better than um, Baby on Johnson. Right. And Baby on Johnson is can't even crack the starting lineup right now. So it's it's I don't know how much of the, the recruiting thing, but it's again, how good are we going to feel February when that we do this all over again? Spring starts again, and we're talking about a team that went five and seven. It's going to be tough to. And then, and then if they, I mean, what happens if they lose to Boise? And then if they lose the first game of the season, like Boise State, good grief. I, but I think that happens even if they go 6-7 and seven or 7-6. Seven and six. I think you lose to Boise State to start off the next season. People are all mad. If anybody jumps on the bandwagon after a win over Florida, and I don't think many people would anyway, but I think jumping there's a, right back off. I think there's more – I put more stock into if you lose to Florida and you finish the season 5-7 and seven of a hangover of that, then – some sort of win beneath your sails if you finish the season seven and six and win a bowl game. I think when, I think when, like the whole reason Florida State was so hyped going to seventeen was that they they end up beating, you know, Florida that was like top fifteen and they beat Michigan in that bowl game and it's like oh wow they just beat Michigan. Michigan got yeah. cheated. They could have been in the playoff of that you know against if they would have been able to beat yeah, Ohio Michigan was State. A good team. It was a good football team. So everyone's like oh man they're they're, they're going to make it happen. This Nyquan Murray you know, and you that. saw what it meant though. Yeah. You saw what it ended up meaning. Oh, exactly. Nothing. I don't think winning the bowl game is a big deal. I think winning this game against Florida just to keep the streaks alive, to keep the the, the momentum in that locker room going, and for the fan base too. I, I think there is some sort of synergistic effect from the way that this this the, this fan base is going to evaluate the season and how they're going to approach things moving forward. It's going to be a rough 2019, win or lose, and that home slate sucks. Yeah. The amount of people that are going to have interest in the home games are actually going to attend the home games. So you, you got to keep you got to keep that pilot light aflame, man, for, for all these months. And, and the only way you do that is if you beat Florida. Yeah, yeah. I I just – I think if they be, it would be a nice ending to a bad season. Yeah. Let's put it that way. And, again, I just think no matter what, and I, I'm certain – again, I, I think Willie can turn this thing around. I think, you know, he wins eight or nine games next year and starts bringing in these type of recruiting classes and gets a quarterback that can run this thing. I think it's going to be – I think it would be really fun to watch. But I'm not I, – I don't – I've seen it happen too much where we, we put so much stock in a game here or there continuing the – I mean, they continued the bowl streak last year, and that did jack squat for this season. For this team, it did. It just didn't. It's still the same team. So the the real strides, and it's I know it's not anybody anything wants any anything anybody wants to hear. The real strides are going to be made from January to August. This season is what it is. It'd be cool to continue the bowl streak, and it would be a disappointment if he didn't. And but it's a disappointment anyway. I mean, they, I think you shouldn't be crushing, man. It's cr- disappointment to me is mild. I think it's crushing. Your first season here. All this, all that positive momentum you had, all everybody doing. There's a something. lot of pressure on him for it, for sure. And then your first season, yeah, you your first season, go, yeah, yeah. Mm. But again, there's different fives and se- five and sevens, right? And if again, if they look like they know what they're doing, say the AC, the refs decide to quit, they pick oh. up every flag they throw on Florida, um, whatever it happens, and it's just a weird play. Or or the Miami game, they just they frankly got screwed out of a touchdown. If they lose on some weird play or weird – just or they play hard and just lose unluckily. You know, I just – I don't think that that's going to be like, well, uh, you know, screw this guy, screw this team. They're never going to turn it around. It's just it's – a, it's a bummer. But, again, he's 5-7. and seven. Scott Frost is – the best he can do is 5-7. and seven. But they're playing better lately. Yes. Don't you think Nebraska fans are feeling pretty good? I, I, but at the same time, it's, they're missing a bowl, and it's 5-7. and seven. Well, that's the thing too. They're climbing. I mean, Florida are State they? has been, a bit of, but are they up and down? I mean, and up at the end down. of the day, a result is a result. You're five and seven. You're five and seven. That you know, should Florida State have lost their first seven games? So then it looks like they're on a. I mean, but you are though. You're growing then from week to week. Nebraska is Florida State, but then again, the, the schedule is so. It was a weird, such schedule. a weird way it's set up that it's hard to say that they, they really they, screwed it up. If they could have played, they'd have been much better off me. opening with Clemson. NC State, Notre Dame, going 0-3 and, and getting just completely trashed. Well, they'd be 0-4 and they'd put Syracuse in there as well. Sure. But then the next eight games, they go 7-1 and one, right. or 6-2. and two. You're like, oh, man, okay, he's got it turned around. Because I, I, mean, I think if they played Virginia Tech right now, they'd beat him by two touchdowns. I don't know. I mean, I really do. I mean, heck, half of Virginia team, they had another transfer today. Another kid came, a guy that plays, came out and transferred again today. After yesterday, another guy transferred. Something's going on with that program, and they might not make a bowl. 
I don't think I think they don't they're they're aren't they four and seven? They're four and six. Four and six. But they got one of their games canceled uh, against Marshall. So if they beat Virginia, they might pull a Florida State last year and maybe try to reschedule the Marshall game if Marshall's willing to do it. Um but are that or they might not make a bowl. Um I think Marshall might actually be like in conference USA can uh, Yeah, so they, they might not they might not be, they able, might to be able to play it. it. They might get a waiver. I guess you could get a waiver to play in a bowl. And the only reason I bring up Virginia Tech people is because they keep beating their chest that they have the longest active bowl streak in the country. Wrong. So they are wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I didn't want to get down this conversation. Sorry. Today. Yeah, yeah. It's, we can't keep doing this. It's always the state of the program. I just, I, I, it's a lot of pressure on those kids and Taggart to keep that bowl streak alive. But for the the actual um, long 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 term health yeah. of Taggart's Prospects. tenure. The state of the program. Jimbo got it, got beat by Florida in 2012, and I was off the I was off the of Jimbo course you bus. Were. And it didn't like, matter at all. Yeah, like, what didn't are you doing? matter a bit. Like you can't lose to these idiots right. uh, at home. Yeah, and lose like that. Give up 300 yards rushing. Um, just kind of get overwhelmed physically there in the second half. Oh, EJ's throwing interceptions to everyone on the team, and you know you're like, man, that was Florida State's best shot. No, man, nope. Yeah. You know, just I. The you could and I and I I really could in 2012 you could see the markings of because oh, they weren't just winning games now a couple of them Virginia Tech there were some games that were close but a lot of those games in 12 they just destroyed ACC teams so much so that they didn't get credit for it like ah it's the weak ACC it's like man Florida State hadn't won 12 games in 12 years and people are just dismissing a 12 and two record and an Orange Bowl win because of who they beat what's well, but they hammered those teams. And you could kind of see it coming. So win or lose, you haven't seen anything in this season that makes you think that next year is going to be a uh, rousing success. Right. So, you know, I guess in, with that being said, better to beat Florida than to lose to Florida. Yeah, that's it. We could have just done that instead of 20 minutes. Yeah, of, uh, sorry, folks. Uh, so you interrupted me coming over to the Midtown office. I was doing film study. I was looking at the, uh, I was at the Florida LSU game. Oh, okay. All right. Some Gators won there. that game. They did. Like, uh, some, I don't even know what the final score was on that game. It was a weird, like, 29-17 or something like that. I don't even remember. Uh, they're not good. They aren't good. I'm still nervous, though. Still nervous. Of Thanks. course you may. Florida State's not good. Yeah. It's an even matchup. That's why the spread's three or four or whatever it is. It's an even matchup. So, like, LSU went down first drive of the game, put it right down their throat, scored a touchdown. Then on the second drive, they were uh, marching down the field and got blindsided, sacked. And then I kept Florida alive. And then LSU also had some opportunities to go for it on fourth and short, and they didn't, which are things I think Willie will do. And that's I'm not criticizing LSU. I think when you're on the road, you can't afford to go for those and then not get them. They kicked a field goal on one. They punched it on the other. And then to start the third quarter, um, I think Florida just went right down their gullet too. So that was kind of a fearful thing. They came out strong at the, at the half, Florida. Yeah. But, again, I mean, they got two really good running backs. Yes. P. Ryan and Jordan Scarlett. I don't, Jordan Scarlett, I don't think, played against Idaho. I don't know if that was precautionary, if he's hurt or not. I should probably look that up. But they have two – They're those two running backs are better than any combination of running backs Florida State has put on the field this year in terms of productivity. Right. I like Jock Patrick. I love Cam. Uh, but numbers are numbers. Yeah. Look at, look at what they've been able to accomplish against probably better run defense than Florida State has seen. Their best wide receiver, I think, is Van Jefferson. Or they got the Tony kid who's pretty dynamic, but Van Jefferson's a kid that was at Ole Miss. He was like he was the, probably the fourth, fifth best wide receiver at Ole Miss, and he transferred out of there. And I don't, I'm trying to watch and see how they actually won eight games at this point with Felipe Franks. That's like what I'm really trying to get down to. That's the bizarre thing. I don't know how they've done it with those guys. They got two good running backs, but they have a a, a, a poor quarterback. I mean, like a yeah, C he's plus certainly not best. good. Yeah, and then a wide receiving core that's nothing that amazing, but. I mean, they found something in their opening drive of the se- or the the last drive of the the first half. These are things that like Dan Mullen just they they started running option. Like they, they they ran like a traditional option play. Uh, right. Well, that's like one thing. Stuff. That kid's a he's he's not you know he's not incredibly fast, but he's pretty fast. He's he's an athletic kid. He's big. The yeah. quarterback Franks. So that's if you're worried about a way, the difference between and I asked Willie that I I'm, I didn't ask the question correctly. Because I know that Florida and Boston College have different offenses, but I did ask him on Monday, what are the similarities? I meant more just from a physical mindset right. kind of they want to run it down your throat. But he's right. Florida does it a lot differently than Boston College. They have two or three wide receivers instead of two or three tight ends, and they're in the shotgun. And they're not giving it to a 240-pound back all the time. Like yeah. it's, it's a whole, But they do want to establish the run, and they want to run the ball. And the difference this week, 
unlike last week, is they have a quarterback that will run um, a good bit. Plus, they have a backup quarterback that they'll put in occasionally who can run. Um, Florida State does not have one of those. So I think, man, I, I mean, I think it helps that you have a quarterback on third and three that you know can get you four, four and a half yards to keep the chains moving. He's not a good thrower. But he can all the time, though. He's not He's not as – that's not really – his game is more so things just break down and he lucks into good big chunk plays. There was, there was a thing – there was a third and two there where he slid short. I mean, he literally like, dropped back. Pressure came at him and he started running at the for the first down marker and he literally slid short. And it wasn't like one of those – uh, I don't know, like preserving his body, like he just went down. Like, yeah. dude, you gotta, you gotta get one more yard. You yeah, gotta have a little more awareness, alive. a little more field awareness. But I will say this: watching again, this is the LSU game. I wonder if what I'm nervous about is that Emory Jones kid. I don't know if they're shelving him the whole year. He's like, he was a, he's a true freshman quarterback. I don't think he's played anything for them. But I mean, you can, you can maintain the. They, they played him some against Georgia, didn't they? Um, yeah, they 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 brought him in for a couple of looks. I think they'll use him occasionally just as like almost a wildcat, just right. bring him in. And but he threw a pass against Georgia. It was actually a good pass. It was it was Georgia was called for interference, or it might have been a touchdown. But yeah, I I just think again, man. I know it's boring, but you can't turn the ball over and you can't be awful on special teams. Nope. If you if if it's a zero zero turnover battle, if Florida State doesn't turn it over at all, they win. For they sure. win. I think I they agree. win. I agree. And and I think the thing too is even if they don't get any, you yeah. just can't give this team the ball at your twelve yard line or your thirty one yard line. You can't, man. You can't make them go earn their points, and you have a you have a real good chance. Yeah. And for however you want to evaluate or, or size up DeAndre Francois, I think Francois is better than Joe Burrow. Yeah, quarterback from LSU. I think, so I think Florida State is a better pa- has a better passing yeah. game than than LSU does. So I think that's those are the things that kind of they keep the optimism going. I don't know how much Florida State's going to be able to run the ball against Florida. Crazy thing too is like two of their best guys are transfers on their front four. Florida. It's crazy how their staff kind of came in and realized they had some shortcomings and went and got transfers. Crazy how that works. They probably cheated to do it, calling kids that are still uh, at another. School. Hey man, you want to come to Florida? We'll get you eligible immediately. Yeah, those kids had to sit out, right? So that's you can't blame. I think them. one of them's a grad transfer. Oh, all right. Well, Willie definitely. W- there should be a website or an app on your phone for kids that are going to be grad students that aren't good enough to go to the NFL, but are maybe looking to go somewhere. Like it could be like a uh, like a Tinder or right. a Bumble. Sw- swipe on them. Yeah, you yeah, Taggart swipes right if he sees a key, looks up his stats, has some highlight clips, and you can swipe right or left to say, "Hey, I'm interested." It's called Huddle. Well, they yeah, but I mean, address. but even then, how do you know, how do you really know that the kid from wherever, Syracuse, wants to play somewhere else for his final season as an offensive lineman? Right. But if you got an app that he's out there yeah. and you see, okay, he started 21 games in his career, let's, well, okay, he's a big kid, he can move. We'll swipe right and see if we can get a text going. I think that's kind of how this new database thing is working for transfers. I think kids put their name into and then coaches – I need to reach out to this coach I know in the SEC to see how it works. Like if there's like a special login, if there's only one login per university, because there's like a there's a database now where kids want to transfer, they put Is their there? name. Yeah. Oh, they well, that kind of there goes my app idea. That was going to yeah. be a million dollar idea. Well, I think I think there was there's um, I think there was a a rumor out there. I don't know if it's a rumor, but I, th- I think one of the tight ends on the roster for Florida State put his name on it, but he's still been out there practicing the whole season. Right. Um, so I think it's one of those things where you can just kind of put yourself, hey, I'm available. I'm out there if you think, you know. But right. you can still practice with the team. Yeah, but also that's – yeah, I get that, but that's also for guys that might have to sit out a year. I want the dudes right. that can play immediately. Immediate, yeah. yeah, immediate right. help. All right, like immediate impact or something. That, that that's app. the name of the app. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Immediacy, urgency. Transfer of power. Urgent love. <laughs> urgent love. There you go. That's perfect. <laughs> transfer of power. I like transfer of power. Make it look like war or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and then you just click on it. It's, it's Joe Smith, right guard, Boston College. Should they do like a 10-second like stand-up clip? Like, hey, my name is Tony. I want to come play ball at a big-time university. I have good hip bend. <laughs> yeah, I got great knee flexion. Uh, just let me know. Just let me know. Here, Here's my digits. Reach out. Reach out. I'll be Slide waiting. Slide to the DMs. Yeah, I'll be waiting. I can't wait to call you coach. That'd be a good way to end it. <laughs> Point at the camera. Yeah, man, because, yeah, sure. I, I would think that Florida State probably doesn't get a lot of those guys, but uh, I don't remember any of them that they got. Alabama even got one a couple of years ago, right? And Georgia got the kid from Alabama, um, the DB. But Flo- I don't remember Florida State ever getting a gra- – uh, 
at least recently that I can remember a grad student, like a grad senior coming in. Uh, happily, uh, I think it was the last one. But, but he transferred but, yeah, because of the Penn State uh, yeah, thing. Yeah. And I don't think he was a grad senior. I think he was like a junior. As far as like a um, – What about actual... that kid from UCF that's hanging around practice all the time now? Like a, He's always in like a sweatsuit walking around with the scouts and stuff. I don't know. The artist – not the artist. DeMarco? I don't know. He was a kid from Georgia, but he went to UCF and he transferred to Florida State. He was on the roster. No, oh, no, I don't know. But, it, yeah, not but anyway, they, if, they, if there was an app like that, they could get a linebacker, a couple linebackers, and an offensive lineman. That would be that would be nice going into the next season. But yes, there's still going to be the holes that we all know are on this team will still be there next year. Bigger, smaller. Well, look, I think when you look at linebackers, you just you've got to get bigger and better there. You just got to. Um, Dontavious Jackson is a good player. I, I really do think that now. I think I, he's a yeah. college line, good college yeah, linebacker. I think, like, I think people were still dogging on him. I, I don't know what. No, man. He I was like especially him. in a game like that. He's good for you. Yes. Um. The other two, you know, I don't know if Woodby will move back to to safety. I just – you don't want 208-pound, 12-pound linebackers, I don't think. I think you'd rather have guys that are bigger and rangier maybe. And you got to get better there. Those and, don't grow on trees, though. They only they, they grow on trees at Alabama. Yeah, they, they do. Or they go to Alabama and get deer antlers. Right? Um, so, uh, so, yeah, they got to get better in a lot of places. Uh, but offensive line obviously is number one, and Willie's right. Like even in the Notre Dame game, they ran for like a hundred yards, which isn't a great amount, but it's good for this team. It's more than their season average, and they did it despite being down seventeen nothing right away. They didn't even run as much as they should have. Like they have shown these last two weeks that something's changed a little bit. Now there's still the occasional every fourth play he's going to get tackled for a six yard loss. That's just some folks you just got to deal with it. It's going to happen. It's a lot of programs, sure, though, too. I especially mean, in that. In that, yeah. uh, Brian Burns had a on a third and two. He raced around oh, in and tackled them for a two yard beautiful. loss. Um, so it's going to happen in that scheme. But by and large, the last two weeks, the running game has looked like a legitimate college running game. They've thrown it ninety times. Like I said, I think it's twenty four for one seventy seven or one seventy three for KM the last two weeks. You know, that's think about if he had done that in a game, which twenty four carries isn't a ton. That's a great running day. He's he's something something seems to have found itself, which no matter what happens on Saturday, if they can run the ball a little bit, show that that's picked up, then you go into next season feeling better. See, I think my concern with Florida is, and you talked about the difference between how they want to run the ball and how Boston College wants to run the ball, or how how Willie talked about it. Boston College is going to go more heavy. They're going to run two tights, three tight ends, that sort of that kind of stuff. They'll be under center Florida. Won't be like that's Dontavis Jackson's game. Like you want to just you yeah. want to just run the ball at me. Let's do this all day. And I'm not saying that he's bad in pass coverage, and I don't, but. I think when he just has to focus on that, he's really good at it. I think A.J. Westbrook graded out really high against Boston College because he's a pretty good tackler. For all, all the struggles that A.J. Westbrook has in coverage, right. he's a pretty good tackler if he's around the boundary, open field. And obviously, Nashville Dean is a good tackler. But, like, Florida is not going yeah. to I – mean, It's going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff. It's going to yeah. be – if you're – Florida's going to run out of sets where they're not making it obvious they're going to throw or pass from. It won't be And so also, obvious. if you have a linebacker that chooses the wrong gap, Against yes. Florida, it'll be much more noticeable. When you've got eight guys right around the line of scrimmage, even if a couple guys make a mistake, you're still swarming to it. Yeah. And they, what they really did well was any time they ran Dylan out wide, man, they all – it was pursuit. Mm -hmm. It looked like old-school Florida State pursuing the ball. And they got to him quick. Well, that's a different cap, man. The, Florida doesn't have 245-pound running backs. Like, if they run it outside and your, fir, and your defensive end gets mauled and your linebacker doesn't get over there – well, that's a first down or worse. Like, those guys can really move. And Dylan, Dylan's a different kind of runner. He's more of an up-the-middle type, barrel over you. And, and they didn't let that happen, which was good. But NC State, when you think about what NC State did, and Notre Dame to a certain extent. Notre Dame was in the shotgun a lot, right? Yeah. They run out of that formation a lot. That's where Florida State just got straight up carved up in the running game. And that's what this will be more like. And this is, this, you know, this is another Groundhog Day moment. You know, Willie was asked Monday his press conference about the run defense, and you know, was it a want to? Was it a scheme thing? What was it? And he said he thought they just kept it simple for them. You know, they made it simple for the they defense. They got back to fast, physical, and aggressive. Again, what point of the season has there been any indicator 
to give any segment of any part of this team additional responsibilities. I, I mean, at some point, I think it's becoming just coach speak. He's just saying it to say it. Like, instead of saying, well, they're playing better, because then it looks like he all he does the, say execution a lot, too. But yeah, and you don't want it to come back uh, to look like it's all in the players. So if you, if you say, well, we kept it simple, made it easier for them, as opposed to just saying, well, man, they finally figured it out and started to play better, because then it looks like you're blaming them for all the losses. Maybe instead of blaming yourself. Oh, so. does he mention that the running backs have been a little more patient? DeAndre has been the the running back whisperer. That's right, man. Who uh, knew? Who knew? De- but, hey, we all know DeAndre is patient running the ball. Yeah. So much so that he has he didn't do it for like eleven weeks. That's real patience. What did he say to you when you asked him about De- DeAndre? I mean, I, I asked him, I asked out. Willie about what. That's not right. I mean, when I ask a question, you don't zone out. It wasn't because your question is. Well, right. I mean, DeAndre still, Francois to me, he just is who he is. Um, but I asked them about was it a was it a concerted effort to get DeAndre involved in the running game more? Because I think he did have ten attempts in that game, and he was only sacked once, so he had nine rushing like real rushing attempts, yeah. and probably eight of them, seven of them were designed. It wasn't just him scrambling. And he said, "Yeah, he said we we told him we wanted to run more. He's like DeAndre's wanted to run more all season, and he said he's been healthy all season, which I, he, you know, he can say whatever he wants. My eyes tell me that that was a different dude." He just ran with more conviction. Right. Let's put it that way. And I think he even said that. Like, he just, you know, maybe a little more confidence. Um, but he ran with a little more conviction trying to make plays with his legs than he has any other time this season. And that was good to see. So, you know, that's basically what he said. But he said that he told DeAndre that they might use him more in the running game, that they wanted to use him more in the running game, and he said DeAndre was excited about it. All right. Well, they're gonna and that he wants that. to run. He's wanted yeah. to run. Joe Burrow busted a, a big run on them. Uh, like a 20-yarder on, on a third and one where he kept it. So, hope he's looking hey, at that baby. kind of stuff there. Get ready, Florida. Come on, DeAndre, bring it. Uh, where does Florida rank in terms of you, fan? I know Northern Illinois, obviously, has got that number one spot that they're not going to relinquish anytime soon. For fandom, of, for my Corey Haight index? Yeah. Yeah. Where does Florida go for you? You know, maybe it's because I grew up in Georgia. And, I, you know, Georgia and Florida are very similar, those universities. There's a lot of people in state that are huge Bulldog fans that did not go to that school that you might say, you know, maybe their neck is a certain shade. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the same way uh, at Florida. Very State school, a lot of people around the state have, grown, have cheered for them for decades and decades. They didn't go there. Uh, maybe their attire is something to be made fun of. But, I, you know, I think I used to not like Florida a lot when Spurrier was there. Right. He, you know, he'd just make those digs and get under your skin. But then you realize, man, it's all the same. Like Florida, Georgia, Florida State, they all have bad fans. They all have good fans. I mean, I heard this. I heard this tale of this group of Florida State dudes that went uh, went up to South Bend, went into their bar, yeah. and started cheering the fight song, and then started punching people. Yeah. So I mean, we all got bad apples in every fan base. Um, so I, yeah, I don't. I don't really have a disdain for them like I used to because I kind of just equate them to Georgia. They're just you know all fans can be obnoxious, and uh, you know. I think the colors are gross. You know, actually, real quick, uh, we're going to talk about Florida State's uh, game. Miami fans. Can- I should say Canisius. Miami. I don't. I do not like Miami fans. You made that bun. Yeah, bun- I, I is like- that something from your dad? Just from him growing up in South Florida? Just no, no. Just seeing it. Just the way they embrace the nonsense. Yeah. All of it. All of it. Every stereotype you'd have about a Miami football fan, they. They don't shy away from it. They I think straight that's, up that's embrace admiring. it. It's almost endearing, in except a when they're not any way. good or they lose a game, and everybody wants to fire the coach. Or they don't show up to the games. That's not a fan, yeah. to me anyway. Uh, but we will talk about Florida State's uh, uh, game against Canisius uh, later on in this very long show. But I'll try to start winding it down. I was thinking about this before I was going to bed the other night, Corey. Oh, good. The bizarre thing is, so I don't know. When I went to when I was living in Mississippi, I you know I was going in there thinking it was going to be like 65, 35, 60, 40 Ole Miss fans. That state, I really genuinely believe, is like fifty two, forty eight Mississippi State fans. I really do believe that Mississippi State is, there's more fans in the state of Mississippi for MSU than there are Ole Miss. Like Florida, I think is is always going to be a, a Gator. Is going to they're going to have a, a majority uh, unless. You yeah. know, it, this goes into a 15-game winning streak over over the Gators or something like that, and I'm fine with it. I'm not. I don't think there's anything wrong. It's just it is what it is. They've been around longer. There's there's more of them. They've procreated at a higher clip or whatever. I don't know. Look at the numbers. Look at the stats. I don't know how it works. But me being 36, growing up, uh, you know, 
the, the formative years of me, the first years of me being able to actually really watch and understand college football, know what's going on. Like I was fourth, fifth grade, like I'm nine, 10 years old or whatever. Like it's 1991. It's 1992. Florida State had a good little stretch there, right? 87, everything started, right? Right. So, like, you know, five years of, of positive momentum going into it. Spurrier shows up, what, 90? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it, it's within, like, you know, 91, 92. It's like, oh, here, the Gators, the mighty Gators, the Gators this, Gators that. They'd been relegated to to, to fairly, they weren't very, uh, they, they weren't, I don't know, viable is not the right word I want to look at, but how, how relevant were they to the discussion of college football? Right, Dan Jenkins had the whole comment about Florida Gator fans, the arrogance of Notre Dame, the tradition of Wake Forest. Right. You know, so I think that's the bizarre thing to me is that everyone talks about I feel about- like, honestly, I feel like that that can be applied to Georgia now. And I am a Georgia grad. Yeah. But Georgia hasn't won a national title since 1980. Yeah. And you would think with the way some of these people act as if they, they're uh, – it's their birthright to win multiple national championships a decade, and they haven't won one since Herschel Walker was 18 years old. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, Herschel Tommy, Walker's 50 now. Tommy Tuberville was on my radio show back in Dothan. and he was saying that he thinks that's the best job in all of America. The number one job is Georgia. He thinks Georgia is the absolute best job in all of college football. Well, because you're not really recruiting against anybody in state. There's a ton of in-state talent. Plus, you can go to Florida and get people. You can go to South Carolina and go to Alabama and get some people. Yeah, he's right. Uh, I mean, I don't know if he's right, but it's a really, really good job. Yeah. So it just it's crazy to me that, that Florida was able to, like, you know, Spurrier, just that little stretch there, it, just, it brought the you know, brought the worst out of them. And they've kind of obviously carried it forward from that. But when you – the bowl streaks, the consecutive winning streaks, Florida doesn't have them. Florida State has them. And, you know, part of that I think is like my disdain for them is the fact that I think – it's again. It's the arrogance, man. They they think that they've been something forever, and they haven't been. Yeah, they, it's really and, bizarre. And the amount of the head start they have on Florida State. Yeah. They have, and I, and I say this, they have nothing to show for. There's they they don't do anything. They have nothing in football that's better than Florida State. Tangible, intangible, nothing. Right. Same amount of national championships. Same amount of Heisman Trophy winners. Same amount of undefeated seasons. Oh wait, no, they've never done that in their entire history. They've never gone undefeated. Their best team. Their best team ever. I think is ninety six. I yeah, 96, 96 or 08, but those two were both really good teams. I think 96 is better than 08. I All think right. they. I think most of them probably believe that. Right. Okay. They lost to Florida State. They did. I was at that game. But more than anything, it's just they had that. The whole dynamic of the Notre Dame fight was the whole. Oh, what you guys get on your SAT? And that's the Florida fan. The Florida fan. The 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 Harvard of the South nonsense. I got a five on my SAT for these five knuckles. Boom. Is that what he said boom on your nose. I should have said that. I do have a story about beating up Florida fans, but we'll save that for another day. Great. But that that, that that's that was the, the thing to me. Just you know, flagship university. You hear people toss that word around all all the time in Mississippi. Uh, they call it like flagship Friday, and the Ole Miss fans like wear blue and red or whatever. And then Florida fans, so you know, we're the flagship university, like we're the you know, we're the preeminent college in, in, in the state of Florida. Our academics are you know second to none. We have the best academic you know athletics program. It's like man, you guys just sit here and just talk, talk, to talk, talk, talk. But you don't win. You don't. You know, it has, it's been five years. Five yeah. years. It is crazy, man. They have a, in uh, eleven and ten, they lost too, right? Yeah. So seven Actually, out of the last eight they've lost? Yeah. Eleven. Eleven was that atrocious uh, just I, I, I tried to burn it out of my brain. <laughs> I don't I I wasn't I don't know why I, I didn't legit watch think that. Florida game. State had like eighty one yards of offense. Total. Eighty one yards of offense. How did that happen? I mean, what they, happened? I don't remember that game. I was in Montana. I think I was working that week. They, I was uh, watch Greg it. Reed had – I can't remember who their quarterback was. It might have been uh, – Brantley? Yeah, Brantley. Brantley, and then they brought in somebody else. Uh, God, who they bring in? I feel like they brought in a maybe Jacoby Brissett. Brissett? And uh, they just couldn't do anything. Like, Greg Reed had a couple picks. Terrence Parks had a pick six. Terrence Parks. Yeah. And it would have been a 21 nothing game if Jermaine Thomas hadn't have fumbled it like the only – they were up twenty one nothing running out the clock and Jermaine Thomas fumbled on a toss sweep and then Florida went and scored to make it twenty one to seven. But yeah. Jimbo had so many close opportunities to shut them out. Yeah, the flo- the one in thirteen too. Yeah. They they Well I no, think fifteen they- and sixteen they could have. And well fifteen well, the safety really wasn't his fault. I mean, McGuire's well, fault. that's right. And then uh sixteen, at least not a touchdown. Like yeah. Nooney fumbles in the end. That's crazy. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's, it's, what's really remarkable about Florida is how bad they've been offensively for a decade. Yeah. I mean, they've been That's bad. Awesome. They've been like, the, not as bad. Florida state's been worse this year than any of those bad Florida, but like think of last year's Florida state team offensively. Mm-hmm. It was gross. Yep. That's been Florida for a decade. 
I mean, it's nuts. And then that's why, you know, you know, I think it was cathartic for the Felipe Franks kid, but he was shushing his own crowd after scoring a touchdown against South Carolina because he's been getting so much flack. Rightfully so because he's not very good, and he doesn't appear to be all that likable a kid with just some of his – just doing that, you shush your home crowd when they're cheering for you? Like they were actually cheering oh, for him. Oh, I thought they were booing no, him. No, no, they because like, che- he just ran in for a touchdown to make it fourteen to seven. Hey, or don't be a fan later, yo. Yeah, and so he starts shushing don't them be a fan as they're later. cheering. It's like, what are you? What's the message you're trying to send there, man? Um, anyway, uh, so it's it's pretty remarkable this streak um, and how bad Florida, how just not bad, just average. Think about it. So, say Florida wins this game and they stop Florida State's bowl streak. Okay. Well, all right. Well, Florida State stopped Florida's last year. But Florida's bowl streak was two. I mean, how, how is that even possible to have two, to not go to a bowl twice in a four year span when you're the University of Florida? And it ain't like you're playing in the juggernaut central. It's the SEC East with awful Kentucky that fired, or awful, mediocre Kentucky for the last yeah, decade, yeah. awful Tennessee that fired its coach. Georgia has only been good recently. Vanderbilt, who's always bad. And you can't even get to a bowl. You don't schedule anybody non-conference except for Florida State ever. You know, we talk and you about, miss a bowl twice in four years. We talk about how these jobs are so ripe and they're the, they're the best jobs, right? Florida, Florida State, Georgia. Florida, when they don't have two of the best coaches of all time, they're ass average. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I was Florida just thinking State about that. had Bobby Bowden. He's pretty decent. Jimbo Fisher wasn't bad either. Uh, but Bobby we'll Bowden, what we'll was Bobby we'll Bowden in 1997? He wasn't a he wasn't an offensive guru anymore, right? But the thing was running That's so well. That's a bad well. number. That, I like 98, 96. 97, 96. I mean, oh, the well, year that we won. How about a year that we won? Well, I'm saying in 97 when he's recruiting these kids, right? Right. You know, they're not coming to play for the great offensive genius of Bobby Bowden. He's not calling plays anymore. He's more of a father figure. Yeah. And they still were what they were. And then Jimbo came in and showed that he could do it. You know, now we'll see if Willie does it or if Willie's there, um, what, Ron Zook? But, again, they've made three. They Ron Zook, Muschamp, and uh, McElwain. Yeah. You know, maybe it's not the easiest place to win. Yeah. But where is? Who is? Yeah. Who does win every every coach they get? Alabama couldn't do it until that guy showed up for a long for, while. For literally for, what, 15 years. They were irrelevant. Irrelevant. Alabama. Now it's just ingrained in all of our souls that Alabama is this football giant. Man, they were – and even before that, they weren't great in the 80s. No. They kept firing coaches. They no. they didn't hire Bowden. And then, you know, they, they get one guy to show up, and he turns them into that. But as soon as he leaves, there's no guarantee that they're going to just pick right back up. I'll get Dabo. They'll be good. Oh, man. And last thought. Um, we went too long on this show for sure. I know, man. Sorry. Well, you guys, we're going we're gonna to be – we're not going to give Let's, a turkey, We'll let this count show. for the Thanksgiving show, too, guys. So I hope you've listened to the first half, cut it off, and then listen to the second half on Thanksgiving. Or we'll just, yeah, listen to us talk about the Canisius game on Thanksgiving. Canisius. Canisius. Canisius? I think, right? It's an I. What did I say? Canisius. Yeah. Or Canisius. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, will we be those – will Florida State fans be the arrogant jerks if somehow – and it's not going to happen. But if UCF somehow surpassed – Florida State. And in, what? Like, in football. And say oh. they won like three or four national titles. Like, it, would that be equivalent almost to what Florida State did to Florida? Like, you've been yeah. around, you're established, and then this upstart, this little brother, just yeah. comes and la- not laughs, well, it but would be, passes you by. But it would be different in the sense that, like, you know, Florida had been playing Florida State for 25 years before. Like, every year it was mandated by the – by the, I think that's urban legend. Oh, was it not? It was. Oh, uh, well, either way, uh, they didn't want to play him. There was talk about that, like in the. In the- uh, but anyway, they had been playing him for twenty five years. They've been on the schedule. Like UCF would be doing it, playing none of the big three, right? Ever. So it'd be a little different, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to. It, it's just amazing to me. I think it just it, again. I'm just going on these crazy tangents. It really just speaks of the greatness of Bobby Bowden, that you're able to come into this state and just you know. Well, surpassed the the, the, yeah. the program that had every had every built in advantage. Yeah, could not take advantage of it until Steve Spurrier showed up. Yeah, well, now in '86 they were number one in the country. I think they went ten one and one. They lost to Georgia, but uh, they were uh, ineligible <laughs> for postseason <laughs> because of you know probation and whatnot. Yeah. Which 
when you will, when you really want to go back and see what the greatness of Bobby Bowden, first you go to 79, 77 and 79, they go 10 and 2 and 11 and 1. 3 years before, 4 years before they were, you know, 0 and 11 and he had turned them into a a 10 and 2 team and then 2 years later they went to the Orange Bowl 2 years in a row. And that's where they got in the national conversation a little bit, but they were still thought of as just kind of a eh. They're nice. They were thought of back right. then as like Central Florida is now. Mm-hmm. Nice 10 win team, top 20 team. It's great. South Florida, nothing nothing special though. But then Florida went on probation. So Dion and those people, may, Sammy Smith, maybe didn't want to go play where they couldn't be on TV and couldn't because back then probation meant something. You couldn't be on TV yeah. and you couldn't go play in bowls. And um, in the state population boomed. It just went haywire. Went through the roof. So it was it was a perfect combination of a good coach, an innovative coach, a fun coach, your main rival being on probation, and uh, you know. The state population, so many more. You didn't have to leave the state of Florida to recruit anymore. You, the best play, the best high school football in the country was in Florida. All that happened around what eighty four, eighty five, and they hired Mickey Andrews. Good hire, very good hire. Yeah, very, very, very good hire. So it all kind of that was the confluence right around the mid eighties, and it is. It's it's remarkable what he did, but it's not so much the dynasty. I just feel like there were a lot of factors that went into the dynasty that weren't all Bobby Bowden. Mm-hmm. Starting with Mickey, starting with Florida probation, Dion, Sammy, that crew that came through, but the '77 and '79 team somehow getting Ron Simmons to come play for you—that's the key to the that's the key to the whole birth of the the program. Was the '77 team and the '79 team? All of a sudden, they were viable nationally. They were finishing top ten. They were real. They were a real football program. Yeah. So anyway, and from that moment, from '77 up until this point. They've, been, they've, is, won a, they've had a winning season every yeah. year. Yeah. And it failed to really be ir- ir- irrelevant um, by and large. I mean, say what you will about the lost decade. This this team still played in big games. I mean, they won ACC championship game. They took, you know, Penn State to the wire in that Orange Bowl. They, you know, beat a number two Boston College team on the road. They would always find ways to sneak in there. No one yeah. ever forgot about us. I mean, no one ever forgot about Florida either, but um, they, they were losing to, to teams that weren't even completing forward passes. Correct. In the 21st century. Correct. Hey, and Florida State will not go 4-8. Yeah. And they don't have the indignity of going four and eight in the season. No, I know. I, that's I saw somebody tweet that was a great thing. They're like, "We ain't gonna go four and eight. You got to save those jokes for somebody else, Florida <laughs> fans." <laughs> All right, let's have a side. We'll be right back. Uh, we'll talk about the basketball game from last night. Right after this, on Wake Up War Chant, you're listening to Wake Up War Chant. All Knowles every day. Now back to Corey and Aslan. All right, we're back. A little bit of a hiatus, but we're back. Let's finish up the show. Corey, I did have a chance um, to go back and listen to Dan Mullen's uh, press conference that he had on Monday. I won't, we won't get too much into it, but he's gotten a little bit soft, so I feel a little bit better. However, I think that Emory Jones kid, I'm a little bit nervous. I think he's he's going to be inserted numerous okay, times well, to that what? game. Guess what? It's going to be Cam Akers might be inserted at quarterback, too. Oh. I bet the Gators are a little nervous. <laughs> the Gators are a little nervous, my man. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about some of that more on tomorrow. All right, let's talk about the, uh, the victory over Canisius, uh, 93-61. Uh, why are you Canisius. Canisius? Canisius. What did I say, Canisius? You said Canisius again. You're just going with Canisius. It's fine. Canisius? Canisius D. Canisius D. Canisius. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Tena- tenacious Canisius D. Canisius based D. some Tenacious D. They did. Man, this is this is the second game uh, again. Ninety three sixty one win for Florida State. Uh, Larry Hamilton, I guess tongue in cheek, called it the the hardest fought thirty point win of his career. I don't really think that was tongue in cheek. I think he meant it. Like it wasn't. It, there were like eight points in the second half. Like that yeah. team's a pretty good team. It wasn't yeah. a thirty point. I mean, I know it ended up thirty two, but Florida State went on like a a thirty to five run to end the game. Yeah, guys like Wyatt Wilkes coming off the bench and knocking down trees. Oh yeah, Just my man heartless. Wyatt Wilkes. But this is the second game here in in. Um, the TL Triple C or whatever we call mm-hmm. now, Donald L. Tucker Civic Center, right, whatever right. we're calling it these days. That, I mean, golly, I've never heard away coaches. I mean, first it was Mike White from Florida. Now it was a Coach Witherspoon from Canisius. Right. I mean, just going, I mean, just sounding almost jealous of, of what Leonard Hamilton's got going on right now at Florida State. It's pretty remarkable. He, they're not lying, man. I, I was, you know, I've watched Florida State now for ten years, and I've seen some great defensive teams. And I'm not putting this one up there with the likes of a team that had Alibi Singleton and Tony Douglas on it. I mean, those are great defenders. Yeah. 
But I don't know that I've ever seen a team that flies around trying to block, trying to contest shots like this one does. It's it's really pretty remarkable for the third game of the season, and it's because and Leonard says it a lot, and I know we roll our eyes, but when you play eleven guys in the first eight minutes of a game, and you play ten guys over fifteen minutes or twelve minutes, it wears another team down. And they're not just as as the Kinesius coach said, they're not. <laughs> They're not just playing to play. Like, they come in there and play hard and give them something and play with crazy intensity. He seemed, just like Mike White, they seemed completely f- almost flabbergasted at how hard the bench guys play. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just – that's a credit to what Leonard's doing. It's, and he mentioned it's, they, they're playing hard, but they're they're playing within the system. Like, they're not just going out there and just being balls of energy. They're not going of energy an and do, charging over yeah, everyone either. Yeah, yeah they, they play with poise. And, uh, you know, I think when you think about two – very good college basketball players. I don't know where their professional careers will end up. But two guys that do kind of everything and play hard defensively like Terrence Mann and Trent Forrest, they're not going to wow you with any stats. Mm. But, man, those guys know how to win basketball games, and they do a lot of things well. There was a play in that game where Kinesis made a basket. Trent Forrest calls for the inbound pass, gets it, and immediately hurls it up to uh, Fiondu for a – I think he got fouled or he got blocked or something. But just the wherewithal, give me the ball, give me the ball real mm-hmm. quick so I can kick ahead. You've got two guys with, with enormous basketball IQs. I think the Vassal kid, um, the yeah. freshman, he has some of that in him too, I think, in a year or two. He might be a pretty, a pretty nice player. Four of seven from the floor, ten points for him. Yeah, I mean, and the bench scored 51 points. I mean, you're going to win absurd. every game when the bench scores 51 points. That's that's crazy. A lot of that was uh, Kevin Gelly. Um, but, you know, overall, all those guys came in and contributed. And it's just, again, this team isn't perfect. They're, I don't know that they're going to be – They're really, know, really good, though. They, they have really the good. chance um, to, be, to be very good because they do play so hard in their experience – and they're pretty good on the offensive end, too. But on defense, man, it looks like an old-school Florida State defense. Now, they're going to struggle at times this year. This isn't, uh, you know, again, this isn't the best team in the country. It might not be the best team Leonard's ever have, but it's one of the best starts they've ever had. I mean, look, man, Kennedy Kine- was 15-3 and three last year in the conference. They won 21 games. And I know people can roll their eyes and say it was the, what are we going to say it is, the MVC. I don't know what conference yeah, they're in, the QVC. But it's a real conference, and to go 15-3 and three in, a co- in conference play and bring back your two leading scorers off that team, and those guys can really play, those two guards, and Florida State sh- didn't shut them down but made them work for everything, which is good moving forward because you're going to be playing a lot of teams that have guards like that. And for Florida State to be able to completely uh, not neutralize them but make them work so hard for everything is a good sign because, again, Florida State – it's a lot of young guys that are playing. It's like five newcomers that are in the rotation, and they they seem to have adapted from Trent Forrest and Terrence Mann, the kind of mindset you have to have. Uh, by the way, Kinesis is uh, – they play in the MAC. The Ma- not the, the MAC, MAC, but the MAC. The Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Correct. I knew that. So, what did I say? Isn't that what I said? QVC. Oh, whatever. It's... <laughs> not QVC, the OVC. <laughs> QVC is like HSN. Um well, I remember looking at the the box where I was at home before I got uh, I showed up uh, in the second half. I'm a poor, poor fan, poor journalist. But you know, so MJ Walker starts off the game with what the first eight points for Florida, mm-hmm. and he kind of goes quiet. But but then Fiondu Cabangeli has a, a team well, high eighteen points coming off the bench. It's, it's pretty rem- it's it's pretty remarkable that PJ Savoy took two shots. He was their leading scorer coming in this game, averaging seventeen a game. He scored two, and those were on technical free throws. He took two shots in twenty two minutes. I just handed stats to Corey and he just grabbed that on my hand and put it on a seat. He he knows it. He knows it already. But PJ Savoy played twenty two minutes or twenty one minutes. How many did he play? He played twenty two. And took two shots. Yeah. PJ Savoy has never been on a basketball court for twenty two minutes and only taken two <laughs> right. shots. He would st- he would start getting shakes if he hadn't <laughs> taken a shot after three minutes. But he played really hard defensively, even without getting any shots at all. That guy, he's not the athlete that MJ and Trent Forrest are, but he's 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 turned himself into a reasonable defender and he makes it hard. And again, when you have MJ Walker's turned into Trent Ford. I mean, he's looking at, he's just an athlete, man. Mm-hmm. And he gets deflections and he's in your face. You've got some guys that can really play um, and are really selfless. Like, again, like that was my point is PJ Savoy didn't, t- took two shots, but was still playing hard on defense because yeah. that's how you got to get on the, that's how you're going to stay on the floor with, with, at Florida State. And, you know, I think the thing moving forward now with the, the tournament in Orlando, it's three games in four days. 
they start with UAB, who they should handle, and then after that, if LSU wins and Florida State wins, that'll be a real that'll be a real test because mm-hmm. LSU's good. And then who knows who they play after that, win or lose. It could be Oklahoma State, Memphis, Villanova, somebody like that. But they're going to get three nice games. Oh, Nova's in, in that tournament? Yeah. Hey, they're out of the, the rankings, but um, still, though. Yeah. So it's going to be a nice test this weekend for them, three games in four days. And what? And then Purdue coming back, who's a top-20 team on Wednesday. So you got four four games now where you're – you're, we're going to find out a lot more about this team. I, I doubt. I don't expect them to go four zero in this stretch, obviously. Um, but again, this is going to be a real nice test for them. A real nice, just a barometer, early season barometer, as you get ready to play in what is easily the best conference in America. I mean, this you could go eight and ten, seven and eleven in this conference, and still get in the tournament and make a run to the Sweet Sixteen or Elite Eight, because it's it's just a it's going to be a bloodbath, man. They're all really good, um, and you got Duke uh, anyway. So, but Phil Kofer still don't know. I asked, I asked Leonard uh, mm-hmm. after the game on Monday night. He was in Phil a boot Co- at the, the game against Boston College. I saw him at the football game. Yeah. He was in a and, boot and still. And Leonard said right now they're just trying to get him out of the boot. Yeah. And he still hasn't really started any running, any, any activity. So he says he's not close. Now, not close could mean two weeks or it could mean, two you months. know, late January. Yeah. You know, you, you obviously hope for the, for the former. But in the meantime, they're going to have to have these other guys – continue to step up I mean it's a, it's a big loss not to have him on both ends of the court but uh so far they seem to be doing okay without him I don't want to take it for granted but I mean obviously the the, the college basketball season so long with all the ebbs and flows of everything and there's going to be times they're going to they're going to probably look maddeningly um, yeah, you know absolutely. disjointed and stuff but it's going to be hard to believe that by the time February rolls around, the, the, whatever struggles they have, as long as they're fairly healthy and they have a lot of this course still going around, they're not going to be playing at a, at a high level when it matters most. Just because you talk about the newcomers, but still Forrest and Mann and, and just the, the core they have, the guys that made the run last year, and they're all playing so freaking hard right now in the beginning of the season in these sort of games that, I man, I, I just think it's it's like a battle-ready team. I mean, they're, Yeah, it just, I, I think the one the one caveat there is when does Kofor get back? How does he incorporate himself into the rotation? When is he fully healthy? Yeah. Is that not going to be till February? Because, hey, man, you played Duke and Virginia in January. Like, yeah. you need kind of Phil Kofor – for those games too, those aren't going to be easy, no matter who you have on your team. Um, but yes, I think if they get Cooper back and everybody's healthy, what when we? I I don't know that this is the ceiling, but it's got to be pretty darn close. I mean, beating Florida, being up by thirty five on Florida yeah. is a and being up and beating a a, a pretty darn good tournament Kinesi, team, maybe the team yeah. by thirty two. I mean, th- this is a pretty high ceiling that this team has, and you want them playing well middle of February on. Now that we know that the ceiling is this high, yeah, there are going to be some ebbs, and it's going to be there are going to be some valleys. It's just the way last year's team, man. People were ready to write that team off. I mean, they struggled to beat Pitt at home. Yeah. Uh, when it mattered season, most, like when it the really year. mattered, they yeah. were in a, like a four point game against the worst team in ACC history, and then they caught fire when it mattered. And you just hope they can do that again. But again, I don't want people to sit here and think that I, I think this team's under, going to be an undefeated team or a top five team. I think this team, if it plays well, can be a top three or four seed in the NCAA tournament. And if you do that, then you, you got yourself a, a shot to make a run, buddy. Yep, yep. Heck, even good. if you don't, they didn't do it last year. They were nine seed or an eight seed or whatever. Yeah. If I nine. remember correctly, they went to the Elite Eight. Yeah, nine seed because they beat, what, eight seed Missouri? The they did. Yeah. Our eight beat nine, whatever, or nine beat eight. But uh, Kinesia's, man, it's a good team. Yeah. Final score, Florida State 93, Kinesis 61. <laughs> um, we'll be back at it again tomorrow. That'll probably be our – final show i might maybe we'll we'll do a double dipper of something but we'll, at least we'll have a show for you folks on wednesday we do promise um but then thursday gonna... you mean oh we'll do wednesday yeah not thursday we'll have a wednesday show yeah. we could do all we could do the renegade express and the call-ins or something yeah it well, could be a marathon show <laughs> maybe daddy's, maybe we'll, daddy's not working on thanksgiving maybe we'll save that and we can run it we can record that we can run that for friday and then for the wednesday program we'll, we'll get back into florida thoughts on uh Dan Mullen, his pettiness, whether it's coming or going. Um, this Emory Jones kid, he's going to keep me up at night now because he's played three games, Corey, so they're going to pull the, the cord on him here, obviously. They're not going to save him for a bowl game. Right. And, um, yep, here we go, man. Here okay, we buddy. go. All right. Well, either way, you got a good basketball team. Soccer team's in the Elite Eight. Correct. Penn State, Friday? Penn State, Friday. Still don't know the time. It's probably out there, but I don't know it. Um, and, uh, you know, if they win that, for people that don't know – the College Cup is the Final Four. They call it the College Cup in, in soccer for some reason. But 
at any rate, if Florida State beats Penn State, they'll go back to the uh, Final Four. Well, because it's like the the World Cup. You have it called the Cup. You know, it's got to be a I cup. I know, but it doesn't just... uh, it doesn't tell you how many teams are involved. I like I like when the nicknames tell me how many teams are left. Okay, like so you need the, the four, the five, two p.m. Two p.m. on Friday. That's a good time. Nobody's working on after the day after Thanksgiving. Get no. out there. Penn State doesn't want any part of this. They can't handle this Southern speed. Uh-uh. Uh, Florida State should be able to run rough shot all over them. I agree. That's the kind of hard-hitting analysis you'll get uh, when we talk about Florida tomorrow. We'll talk to you then. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.